Okay, guys, lots of guitars. Let's put strings on this Paul Reed Smith SE 245. Here we go. So this thing got sold to me oh about a month ago and I took a look at these frets and they have a lot of corrosion on them. So right up in here you can see, maybe you guys can see, the frets don't look too bad right here. But as you get down this way, they are almost like, it almost looks like the EVO fret wire where they're gold. These things are so corroded. So I've got some fret polishing to do on this thing. And uh, of course then it needs new strings. So let's get in here and see what's going on. Courtesy of my Ernie Ball Power Pro, Peg Pro. Keep this baby charged up. So this is not really a tutorial on how to reach uh, string your guitar. This is a guy working in a used guitar shop and I get all these guitars traded in and they all need to be shined up and fixed up. But uh, some guys call me and they say, hey, uh, you uh, did this tutorial on a restring on how to do this and that. Yeah, I'm not really doing that. but. Uh, um, it, it also works for that. But that's not really my intention to uh, be teaching guys how to put strings on a guitar. Or maybe it is. I don't even know. But these guitars need new strings and uh, that's what I'm doing. Look at this tailpiece. It's, I love the brass saddles. But uh, yeah, it's got some corrosion on it. It's one wraparound piece. Really nice. Yeah, so this guitar was in Florida or someplace that's got high humidity. Because these frets are not looking good. All right, so let me take my fret guard. And I got some thousand grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to work on this first fret right here. Okay, so I just shined up this fret right here. And it turned out real nice and shiny. And as you can see, as you go down this way, you see how almost brown these frets are. So I really got to get in here and um, polish all these frets. Don't know, beautiful top on this guitar. Look at that thing. But I don't know why the frets ended up doing that. But I think it's going to be easy enough to get these things looking good. So just a couple of swipes with the thousand grit sandpaper. All right, so before I get too far on this neck, I'm going to go ahead and spray some of this Dunlop 65 on here. And I'm just going to try to clean this thing for a while. It's got a really beautiful top about it and you guys can't see it but there's a ton of dust on it. Looks like solid mahogany uh, built by Cortec Musical Instruments Indonesia. So Paul Reed Smith was an American and still is an American guitar manufacturer. He's over in Maryland, right? It's like on an island off the coast right there in Maryland where all the Paul Reed Smith stuff is built. 
But then, oh, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago, they started their import SE line of imported PRSs. And that's what this guitar is. So the Cortec factory out of Indonesia. And they make a lot of guitars. I get a lot of court guitars from time to time. And uh, the guitar manu uh, Indonesian guitar manufacturing is um, very, very close to being some of the best guitars that are manufactured in the world. I know that all you guys want, want, don't want to hear that. You think that American guitar companies are the best. And uh, they are, but these Indonesia and even the South Korea, and you guys already know that Japan is way up there with ESP and everything that they do. But Indonesia is catching up very quickly. That signed up nicely. Yeah, Indonesia is catching up really quickly. And, uh, producing some of the best guitars in the world. And I hate to even say it, but there's some factories in China that are kicking butt and making great guitars. Uh, Eastman Guitars, they got a great reputation. They're made in China. And the Cortec factory, uh, I think Cort has a bunch of different factories. Some in uh, Indonesia, some in China, some in South Korea. But yeah, they've, they've sort of taken over when it comes to building great guitars. Yeah, I've never seen a guitar really do this, though. Where these fret frets are uh, turning green. Especially something that's not that old, like this thing. But it doesn't have any other... Um, any other signs of um, laying in water or anything like that? I mean, the guitar is gorgeous. Other than these frets. Okay, so. Let's get my camera out. Let's take a look at these now. Got the bird inlays here. So what is this? 12, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22. PRS Custom 22 SE 245. So I think what the 245 is is the scale length. So let me grab a tape measure. All right, so I think what happens here is this scale length is 25, no, 24 and 5 eighths? 24 and 3 quarter is Gibson scale length. I think this is a little bit shorter at 24 and 5 eighths, I think is what they're calling the scale length. Leave me some comments, guys. 
I think the scale length is a little bit smaller. Then uh, Gibson length. Leave me comments. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, I'm going to take some of that Music Nomad and let it soak into this fretboard. Okay, well that's kind of soaking in there. I'm going to go ahead and we'll test the electronics a little bit. Looks like we got juice to this amp. Okay, let's see what happens here. Turn everything up, get something to tap on the pickup with. It's in good shape. So it's just a little, it's just a little strange that the, uh, the frets were so, uh, I don't want to call them rusty, but man, they were just, they needed some love. I don't see any fret wear on the frets. And there are absolutely no fret sprout going on. So just one of those things where uh, um, I don't, I, I can't even imagine what he did, the previous owner, to uh, make the frets do that. Maybe he cleaned it down with, uh, he probably didn't clean it at all, but maybe he cleaned it with uh, a wet rag or something, or maybe he just sweated a lot. I have no idea. But the frets um, look really nice. I don't see any fret wear down here in the first three uh, frets, fourth fret, where you would see some, you know, where you're in your cowboy cords and you get a lot of fret wear right in this neighborhood. You don't see anything like that going on. Let me shine another light on it. And well, one more time, we're going to take the camera, and I know my camera work is horrible. I'm going to get in here and let you look at these frets now. And that camera, you know, this camera will pick it up a lot, a lot better than my actual eyes with my reading glasses that I have on. You'll be able to really see, especially if you watch this video, you know, at home on your big screen TV, you'll really be able to see these frats, but they, they look great now. So again, I'm kind of, uh, Kind of freaking out, not really freaking out, but I'm kind of like very, very interested on how they ended up in that condition, being all rusty like that. Today's string choice. Okay, this beautiful PRS SE245 is going to get a set of PRS uh, high output 10 through 46 regular light gauge strings on here. Um, PRS making their own strings. Uh, PRS is going to be one of those companies that's going to start getting all the accessories together. So eventually you'll be able to get PRS straps and picks and capos and uh, guitar stands and of course the strings. And So PRS is going to start and you're probably starting to see a lot of it happen already. They're going to end up with all the accessories. <clears throat> so let's see. And they probably don't, uh, you know, make their own strings. These are, uh, these are all probably strings that are come from, uh, 
a different company like Diderio um, or something manufactures these strings for PRS. So this is a wraparound tailpiece. So I'm going to go ahead and load the tailpiece first. And you put the string in this way and then it wraps over the top. Yeah, this condition of this guitar was a little bit weird, those frets. But they're all shined up now and it, it looks perfect. And uh, it's almost, it's the next day now. I worked on this guitar yesterday and it's the next day now. And it's almost like it's forgotten all that horrible uh, corrosion that were on these frets. That's ancient history. Good. Let me get my string winder. Stretch these strings out a little bit. Just to make sure they get seated down in the bridge piece. That's a, such a nice looking bridge right there. Tuners feel really good on this guitar. heavy. String height is kind of high. Let's take a look. Now, my not straight edge might not fit on here because this is an unusual scale length. Doesn't fit. So all I can really do is sort of look down the neck, see if it looks nice like it's got a lot of... Yeah, it does. I'm going to tighten the truss rod. Here we go. Shouldn't be too bad. And now, uh, you shouldn't necessarily need to loosen the strings to tighten your truss rod. But why make it fight so much, right? So we're going to go ahead and loosen the strings a little. Because these truss rods are rated at like, I don't know, 200 pounds or something. And so usually you can adjust a truss rod without loosening the strings. But we're going to go ahead and just... Um, Loosen the strings a little bit. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get my camera zoomed in a little down there. Let's 
Okay. All right, so this is my wrench. And I even put a little tag on there that says PRS. So let, let's get in here. And let's tighten this thing. Oh, there's a good turn right there. I'm going to go just a little tiny bit more. Okay. That thing looks good. I have a feeling it's going to play really good now. I got a feeling. What was that? Oh, that's a Beatles tune, right? Okay, but let's put this little screw back in here. That holds the truss rod cover on. Okay, and then let's go ahead and tune the guitar back up to pitch. Okay, there we go, move that back a little bit, yeah I just play the guitar to see if I like the setup, it's important to have those tools. Strings are nice and low. So that just that little two minutes that it took me to adjust and tighten that truss rod. Now the guy that comes in and buys this guitar is going to be like, man, that guy set that guitar up. It plays like butter. That's what you want. You want your guitars. You want to spend that little extra time. And so if the guitar was fretting out anywhere, I'd be able to tell because I'm sitting here playing it. Wow. Really nice. It's got kind of a fatter, chunkier neck on it, and it's got 10 gauge strings on it. And that's not really my bag. I like a thinner neck, and I like nines. But I have to say, this thing feels really good. So I got some BRS stuff for sale. It's all SEs. But I think I got about six PRS SEs for sale now. So, there you go, guys. Uh, another beautiful guitar. She's got new strings on it. She's all shined up. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Do me a favor. Like, subscribe. Uh, Patreon, if you want to help me make videos. I got a Patreon account. Uh, look at my links in the description below. We have a uh, Teespring link. You can get a Zim's Guitars t-shirt or a coffee mug. You can. Um, there's an Amazon link in the description. You can, uh, you know, 
um, click that little Amazon link. And every time you buy dog food or a new pair of Levi's or a new pair of Vans or something on Amazon, you know, I'll end up with like 33 cents or something. But, you know, it all adds up. It helps the channel. Um, I uh, pay to have all my videos edited. I do not do the editing on these things. And so there's a little bit of cost involved there um, to do all the editing. So if you want to help the channel, those are the uh, avenues that you can take to help the channel. Thanks again for watching. Go buy a guitar.